So according to YouTube analytics, about half of you guys watching are living somewhere in North America. That means it is very likely that half of you have never had the chance, nay, the privilege of experiencing the wonders of the European ladder firsthand. I mean, I'm fairly certain that many of you heard tale of this fabled land in which everyone is speaking different languages, with the only shared vocabulary consisting of a variety of English profanity. But not all is bad about competing on this side of the pond. When lacking voice chat, you start improving your mechanics out of necessity. In a way, it feels like playing Overwatch and hard mode. I mean, really, it shouldn't be that difficult to pull off a graph dragon combo against a team that has no defensive ultimates to speak of, but said thing gets a bit more complicated when your Zarya is not in voice chat to hear that you are a couple percent off your ultimates. That's why, back in my prime, I have always prioritized improving myself mechanically. Because while it would be easier for a team to coordinate for simple combos, no such thing is an easy task when playing on EU. I can't control what my teammates are doing, but I sure as heck can control how many heads I'm clicking. But the thing is, I'm an old man now. I don't know the patience nor inclination to try and hard carry my way into another golden weapon. So now that I have returned to competitive play after my years long break, my approach has most certainly changed. I mean honestly, Overwatch is simply more fun when everyone is in voice chat and trying the hardest to play the game the way it was intended to be played, as a team. And today's story is interesting to me because it isn't like the first ranked episode where the gameplay told a tale with epic conclusion, and it's not like the second one where I walked away from it with an important lesson learned. This one, more than anything, was memorable to me because of the people people I played with. And hey, if you've been enjoying these most recent ranked episodes, do let me know by dropping me a like. That's a great way of supporting me and telling me to keep them coming. So with that out of the way, our story today takes place on Voskaya Industries. Now, if there was ever a map type in Overwatch that allows for any twist of events to happen, it would be 2CP. There's no other game mode that lends itself so much to snowballing as well as any number of random events. And it is for that very fact that I usually stay away from covering 2CP maps in my videos because the pacing is just all over the place and it makes it really hard to tell a coherent story. But that's not gonna stop me from trying anyway as me and my team are tasked with defending the first objective. Now, as you may have seen last week, Mercy Pocketed Farah Smurfs are very much part of the course in Diamond and since I was kicking the game off playing May, I could only hope that my second DPS was up to the task. But before said DPS even had a chance to make a play, my hammer went on the flank too. I mean, I'm assuming that he was trying to combat them, but really this was not looking like a very promising attempt. Our frontline was not looking much better either. My Sigma had a really bad case of backline tanking, meaning we gave the attackers all the space in the world to simply push past the choke point, and before we knew it, we found ourselves bombarded from multiple angles. At this point, you would assume that the enemy set us cornered and that we were stuck in a tight spot, but in reality, we weren't stuck with them at all. Oh, they were stuck with us. We allowed them to push onto the objective to cage them in with an ice wall so that our Hammond can poke them from behind while our soldier proceeds to put his hit scan prowess on display by annihilating the enemy squishies. And as for their last remaining tank, my Zenyatta and I didn't even give him a chance to heal himself as he got deleted by a Discord Orb freezing combo. The Farah was still floating around in our backline, but without the help of their mercy, it was only a matter of time that they found themselves eliminated. Nobody has said a word in voice chat at that point, and as much as I was framing this engagement, in a way that made it look like we had everything under control, in reality, there were a million things we could have done to play that much more smartly. The very next engagement painted a very similar picture, where it was not cohesion that allowed us to come out on top. In typical EU fashion, we just outskilled the opposition with basic plays that, even though played improperly, were still good enough to take home the W. Now here's where the lack of communication really comes to bite us, because while my Hammond as well as my soldier were pressuring the enemy Farah into basically doing nothing for that entire team fight, I, as a projectile player, didn't at all pay attention to her in order to secure the fight at the front line. And since nobody called out her position, you can imagine my surprise when I suddenly ate a damage boosted rocket from behind. Oh, that'd be honest again. Pharmacy, pharmacy. My lack of omnipresent awareness getting me killed is one thing, but what really blew my mind at that point was my team's lack of pattern recognition. You would really assume that since all of them saw that this Farah blew me up, they would know not to stand in the same position as to avoid suffering the same fate. Except they didn't. The enemy Farah got away with two eliminations before anyone bothered to attack her, but at that point the damage was already done. Since my soldier didn't have a discord orb or damage boost of his own to combat the flying rat, even the use of his ultimate wouldn't achieve much more than being a general nuisance. One that they responded to by simply booping him off the map. By the time I returned to the objective, the situation was already looking dire. Our forces were dwindling and the only way we could stabilize in this engagement was by investing an ultimate or two. But of course, since nobody was using voice chat, rather than using a select few ones, 
so our team decided to dump our entire ultimate bank into this fight with reckless abandon. And the worst part about it is that this wasn't even enough to win. The enemy tracer was running circles around us while picking up targets one by one. The longer this fight lasted, the more it seemed like all hope was lost. But that did not stop the cavalry from coming anyway. Since dying as a defender on the first point is completely inconsequential thanks to the instant respawn mechanic, we decided to throw our bodies at it one more time in an attempt to turn it around. The question is if that's gonna be enough. As much as I was ready to throw myself on the objective in a last-ditch effort of stopping the cap, my teammates, whom I assume continued to press W, suddenly decided to back off. And for the first time, that prompted them to actually use voice chat. May we're backing. I'm touching. Are you guys not? What? Come on! No, no. We, we, they, they got way too many people. We're only three. What do you mean we just got a pig? Yeah, we There's got a pig on the ball, and then they yeah. five or six on point. They're How does nobody say anything until that moment? Uh, we're in a, we're in a voice channel together. Excuse me, what? These people have been in a separate voice chat and just decided it wasn't necessary to communicate with me? Who was trying to make callouts this entire time? Whatever they were talking about in that voice channel, it probably wasn't about the game because our team's coordination was absolutely abysmal. But for the time being, we had more pressing concerns because that Farah player that has been going for the widest flanks known to mankind, yeah, they continue to do exactly that. And much to my surprise, it wasn't our soldier who tried to combat that, but instead our Hammond. I mean, I get not wanting to run into a situation where you become the victim of another environmental kill, but it was definitely annoying that you just hung out on our backline. But the thing is, they weren't really doing anything useful. I understand trying to be methodical, but whatever they tried to do was more cowardly than anything else. I guess that's a lesson in only because that's an ult account doesn't mean it's a smurf, and all they ended up achieving was not playing the video game until they ran into our ulting soldier. But following that victorious team fight, something changed. Regardless of whether or not my team cared for it, I continued to call the shots, and surprisingly enough, I felt like I finally had their Attention. Tracer on you, uh, bap, 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 bap. They're gonna res it, they're gonna res it, guard the body. Ah, uh, nice! Can we get this hawk? No heal, no heal. Tracer half. Yo, first one, nice. Now usually I'm of the opinion that support is the perfect role to take the lead on shot calling because they have the best view of the entire battlefield. And it's possible that they were doing that, but considering the fact that nobody was talking to me, I just continued to do it myself to surprisingly great effect. But as much as our team's cohesion has improved after my little blunder at the first point, I do attribute some amount of our success to the fact that the enemy fire was just absolutely throwing the game. I mean, talk about a lack of confidence. Or competence. They were taking pot shots from so far in the back, you'd assume they're playing a sniper. Not to mention that this poked at nothing because they already had their ultimates. Eventually, my Hammond got fed up with her and decided to spare them a visit in their spawn. I really want to know what exactly went through their head in that moment, as they insisted to continue playing what is arguably one of the worst DPS heroes currently in the game. Well, whatever the case may be, Hammond eventually took care of them. But he wasn't done just yet. Once realizing how useless that Farah is, their mercy made the switch to Zenyatta, and me landing an icicle headshot was exactly what we needed to take them out. Following my callout, Hammond returned from his spawn camp to roll over the 1 HP Zen, and then continued to pressure their second support. The enemy Ana tried desperately to survive going as far as to wasting her ultimate in hopes of their Winston helping them out, but at last, the tiny hamster and the giant mech would prevail. Our team's cohesion and ult economy had improved drastically to the point where the final fight ended in a firework of ultimate abilities that made it impossible for the attackers to even stagger onto it. As much as I'm happy that we managed to hold it together, as we all know, anything can happen on 2CP. And needless to say that I still had a few questions for my team. We may have held under the second point, but there's no telling what kind of cheese cunt we're going to face on offense. But objectives aside, I still wanted to know what the heck was up with that stack in my team. So, how many of you are stacking? Is it like the whole five stack? Four. Four, okay. Who do you think is not in the stack? That was a tough question. It obviously was not Sigma, because I already talked to him. My Baptiste's lack of pattern recognition was worrying, but not really telling. But there was one point where I called out to my soldier that a tracer was hiding behind him, and he did react to that callout even before we had this grand reveal, when previously nobody seemed to have listened to me at all. Maybe the soldier? Cerberus? Yeah, yeah, you got it, dude. Bag us. I don't know if you're memeing or not, <laughs> dude. I'm really confused there. At the end, I didn't get what I would have considered a clear answer, but I guess it didn't really matter too much. What did matter was 
us, making our way to the first point to continue our dominance over the red team. The defenders were setting up in interesting positions considering they knew full well I played May all round and it was easy for me to catch the Reinhardt off guard. As much as he looked like he was having a mild seizure, he was lucky in the sense that not all of us were laying into him allowing for his survival. But a lack of pattern recognition seems to be the norm in Diamond since none of them made any effort to establish a position in which they can't get walled off quite as easily. This time Reinhardt was feeling the brunt of our team's damage which eventually led him to flee and panic, a move that will be punished by our soldier who was more than ready to chase down those who break formation. It was easy pickings from here on out, the defenders were completely distraught as they witnessed their main tank hightail it out of the front line and now there was nothing left for them to do but to retreat or submit to their inevitable doom. The objective was ours and now all we had to do was take this confidence and bring it all the way to the second point. So long that nothing happens that could break our momentum, we would surely be able to take this game. How did my Zenyatta die so fast? Can I just highlight the fact that even with my Zen immediately headshotting the Sombra, he still did not have enough time to react before his moon-sized hitbox absorbed every single bullet coming out of Sombra's pea shooter? Man, I really hope this doesn't end up being a bad omen. I mean, there's no way we're going to draw this game only because we lost our Zenyatta falling the first cap. Right? GG's. GG. Nope, it didn't. Alright, granted, as far as gameplay is concerned, this was not the most exciting match ever. I just thought it was funny how I tried to shot call my team this entire match without getting a response, just to learn that they were stacking in a voice chat elsewhere. I mean, honestly, if somebody got that fat EU experience, it was probably the red team. I can only assume what their voice channel sounded like when that Farah smurf got spawn camped by our ball. Unfortunately, not every episode can make for an epic tale of redemption when I have to upload these videos on a weekly basis, but hey, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. So thank you everybody so much for watching don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video subscribe if you want to see more and definitely hit that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload i hope you guys have a fantastic day and until next time peace